Hi, and welcome back to The Blender on Sensor TV. This week, we're in Los Angeles talking with glam metalist Steel Panther before heading back home for a change of pace with Aria chart topping and award winning Brisbane band Shepherd. We get a little saucy in Melbourne and then check out how to catch a movie when the cinemas are closed. And then we close out with our favourite purple friend. But first, let's go straight to the US of A where Matt is chatting with Sticks It In Ya from Steel Panther. Well, Sticks It In Ya from Steel Panther, thank you so much for joining me. Matt, it's a pleasure to be with you. I have long looked forward to this interview. Well, look, I thought I'd start with asking how, well, how are you personally dealing with uh, the current sort of lockdown situation? Well, I'll be honest with you. I'm losing my f***ing mind, Matt. I actually really miss my guys. You know, we have a we do have a great time uh, when we jam, and I miss playing music with them, and I miss going on tour and, and just rocking and making people super stoked. This is forcing bands to uh, rethink how they want to entertain their fans and how they want to try to grow their brand. And so, so what we are doing, I don't know if you're familiar with what we're doing online right now with our days of the week and deep thoughts. And uh, I am. We, they've been like the response to that stuff has been, I mean, it's been stellar. It's, it's uh, I can't believe it. So, you know, we reached out to some of our celebrity friends to ask if they wanted to do a few of them and more and more are coming to the table. And now we're getting our friends and people who just want to do it because they just want to be involved in it. And we're also planning on doing a, a live streaming performance uh, towards the beginning of June. I do have to ask, Sticks, what day of the week is it? I don't know. I haven't, I haven't looked on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Hold on, I'll tell you. It's Thursday. Bang on. <laughs> Wait, is it Friday for you? It is Friday for us and the Friday before a long weekend. Oh, amazing, man. I, w I wish I was there with you. What are some of the, I guess, non-musical things you've been up to? And I guess sort of like any new skills or hobbies you've picked up? Things around the house that need a little attention that yep. maybe, I was, maybe I was lagging on doing. I now have time to watch YouTube and learn how to fix shit that I've never known how to fix. I didn't ever really know how to clean my bong correctly. And there are such great YouTube videos on how to really get the resin off the stem. Have you tried the, uh, have you come across the pur purple methylated spirits and rice recipe yet? The, the what? There's methylated spirits, with it, which is clear, but then you get a purple one, which is sort of like less potent, doesn't smell as bad. You put a little bit of that in the apparatus with a little bit of rice, give it a shake around. The rice actually cleans all the stuff off. Then you tip it out, wash it out. I feel like I'm watching YouTube. You guys were due in Australia this year and have to reschedule till next year. Look, um, first of all, what a shame that you not won't be coming to Australia, first of all, Sticks. We love playing Australia. Australia, when, mm. when people, you know, when I hang out with my my buddies off the road and they say where's your favorite place to play australia is always in my top three because the weather the vibe the beer the women the fans you guys understand what we do you appreciate it you appreciate a good you know a, a good laugh and you know how to rock and party and and mm. missing that um this year is it was you know it was a little heartbreaking i do know that we're coming back and i know that we're going to come with a with a vengeance because you know you tell us you can't we can't do something we're going to find a way to do it and we're going to do it hard and we're going to do it fast there has never been a more important time for a band like steel panther and i feel like we're going to be able to provide a place for people to go listen listen to it like forget about some bullshit for a while and just just f***ing have a good time let's get on to hope what is a fun topic for you mate the topic of steel panther never being really far from a scandal or a good bit of controversy one mm -hmm. of the reasons one of the many reasons we do love you guys uh i'm of course talking about the uh the pussy melter pedal you fell foul of i guess a bit of political correctness with that unfortunately but you yeah. have um bounced back with the butthole burner uh, look, tell me all about the butthole burner, uh, what it sounds like, and uh, I guess a bit of your experience with dealing with the the 
what was it, the the clap back. We were like, hey, wait a minute. You don't get to tell any, any people what to do. So we decided to make a physical pedal and call it the Pussy Melter. It's free speech. It wasn't harming anyone. It was something that someone didn't like. They were offended by it, so they wanted to try to police everyone by going, I don't like it. You're not going to be able to see it. And we're like, mm. f*** you. That was our feeling. So we put it out. We did a limited run. They sold out. What we decided to do, because we had so many people on a waiting list who didn't get the Pussy Melter, we decided to reissue the same sound, the same circuit, the same guts mm -hmm. in another pedal, but we didn't want to remake the Pussy Melter. So whoever bought the Pussy Melter, that's it. You own it. And it's never going to be made again. We wanted to call this one the Butthole Burner because in the beginning of the scandal, uh, Satchel had mentioned that that was the original name and that we wanted mm. to tone it down, so we created the Pussy Melter. Another product you'd like to steal, see the Steel Panther name on? I'd like to see the Steel Panther name on a barbecue. I mean, I love barbecue. And if I could grill my chicken on a Panther barbecue, mm -hmm. that would be, I mean, that would be, that would be it. If you guys were to write a song about the current situation, what do you reckon it would be called? Caro, no way are you f***ing doing this ever again to me. Love it. I would like to say to our Australian fans that we are super bummed that we can't come this year. It's it's going to be different uh, post-corona, and it's going to be more incentive for us to throw down the hardest show you've ever seen. And uh, we want to we provide that escape for you guys to just come to the show Forget all the bullshit, forget the finances, forget the health stuff. You know, for, for that hour and a half, just come unleash the beast. Fun fact, those guys used to call themselves Metal Shop and Metal School before finally settling on Steel Panther way back in 2008. Now it's time to check in with Brisbane pop rockers Shepard, who smashed the charts and scored a heap of awards with Geronimo and Bombs Away. In 2020, they're recording a new song every month, the latest being Thank You, an ode to mothers everywhere. With George and Amy from Brisbane band Shepherd, thank you so much, Guy. You've really outdone us all in terms of Mother's Day presents. Thanks for that. Um, <laughs> tell, tell me a little bit about Thank You and how you recorded it. Well, we had a few years to make up for presents, I think. Um, <laughs> But this is a this was a song that we wrote for Mother's Day for our mum. She's been not only an important part of our entire lives, but she, she's been here since the start of the band, and she's been coming on every tour as like a as a tour manager and and making life a lot easier for us on the road. She's she's essentially been an extra band member, and she does it all with a smile on her face, and she's never complained, and she's always just that rock that we needed. So we we thought it was high time that we wrote her a, a nice thank you song. Well, whilst in isolation, we've been keeping busy because uh, we decided that we were going to write a song a month and uh, yeah, get lots of music out there for our fans. So yeah, keep your ears tuned. Yeah, it's actually been a lot of fun getting it out there and not having to get on flights and travel everywhere. It's been yeah. really um, productive for us. This performance that we uh, that we're about to sh play, we, we did at the Triffid, yeah, which was it felt like we were at a gig, which was really kind of surreal. <laughs> yeah. There's no audience, obviously, but it was nice to be on stage again for a, for a brief moment. Thank you so much for um, sharing the video, guys. Can't wait to actually see you in a real gig, but this is the perfect perfect substitute for now. Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't fall asleep You'd read to me And lay right there at my side If I grazed a knee From climbing trees You'd comfort me as I cried You made my lunches every day I know you were running late You would walk me all the way to school Building castles out of sand Way too young to understand Life was easy all because of you So I want to thank you For making me half as good as you And as I get older I understand what I put you through I misbehaved, I made mistakes But you never tell do for all 
As a teen, I lied, ignored advice, pretended I didn't care. But I should let you know it was all a show. I loved you more than I shared. I put your patience to the test, but you always did your best. You were tough, but you were never cruel. And now that I'm a man, I'm proud of who I am, and I know it's all because of you. So I want to thank you for making me half as good as you. And as I get older, I understand what I put you through. I misbehaved, I made mistakes, but you never turned away. So I want to thank you for all that you do. As I get older, I understand what I put you through. I misbehaved, I made mistakes, but you never turned away. So I want to thank you for all that you do. Yeah, I want to thank you for all that you do. bit of trivia Shepard was on the cover of our 999th edition in 2013 <laughs> and now because we know that you've been thinking where's the burlesque Jesse's taken the cameras to Maison Burlesque in Melbourne to find out what exactly is learned at a burlesque class today we're joined by Poppy Cherry the director and mischief maker at Maison Burlesque in Melbourne which is going into its third term online so first of all just tell me a little bit about Maison and what it's all about We've been around for about six and a half years as a dance studio. So normally what we run is we run a series of weekly classes. We run big student showcase events where we have, you know, over 100 students perform in our shows. We run a burlesque boat cruise. Um, we run hens parties. So I guess we do a whole lot of different classes and, and burlesque events and things. Yeah. And so obviously the upcoming term moving online is as a result of coronavirus and what's going on yes. in the world. And it starts from the 25th of May, but so far, how is that adjustment affecting Maison? We were ready to start a term in person back in March when all of this happened. And we basically, within a week, we made a really snap decision to suddenly change all of our classes. So we had a whole term, students were enrolled, we had to change everything, uh, sort of develop an online infrastructure. So we managed to do that in a week. For a lot of our students, the reason they come to us is because it's, I mean, it's a lot of fun. Um, it, you know, there, there's a fitness aspect to it, but I think a lot of it is about that they love sort of those burlesque concepts. They love the dance, the music. Um, a lot of them normally come to us because of the performance aspect. So that's been a bit of a challenge. But certainly a big part of it for them, I think, is also about the community and the social side. So, yeah, we're trying to bring a bit of, a bit of sunshine into their day. What do you think it is about the art of burlesque that really draws people in and really gets people excited? So there's different aspects for whatever kind of personality you've got. So a lot of the people who come to us find that, yeah, it's an opportunity to let loose, be yourself, have fun um, in the classroom setting. Sometimes we're getting half naked together, so that's fun too. <laughs> Less so online. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I think it's it's just, it's a really fun community building, um, self-esteem boosting kind of activity for people. Yeah. With the term that's coming up, we've launched a whole bunch of new classes. So we've come up with some really fun and sort of slightly goofy ideas. Like there's an erotic aerobics class. Um, there's a Jane Fonda dance class. There's one called yeah. Butt Stuff. Um, so we've kind of 
got a few silly things that are there um, for a bit of shits and giggles for the online format. Um, so people have been really responsive to that. I'm one of the Feather Fan Dance teachers, so you can see the fans behind me. Um, so that's what I teach. So I'll teach you how to do things with fans. We've even developed a tutorial. So if you don't have your own Feather Fans, you can uh, make your own fans out of paper and cardboard. So we've got a YouTube tutorial on how to do that. So not having them doesn't mean you don't you can't join in. Um, we've got some classic vintage burlesque styles where you'll learn a lot more about the historical vintage style of burlesque. We've got something called strip hop, <laughs> which is a hip hop burlesque fusion. We've got a lot of flexibility classes. There's ballet. Um, yeah, kind of you name it. We've got a little bit of something for everyone. Tell us a little bit about the inclusiveness of the classes. So who can get involved? Uh, they're basically for anyone. Um, so it doesn't matter your age, your gender. Um, it really, it doesn't matter your body shape. Um, it's, these are really for everybody to get in and have a go. Why not come in? You can do a single class, see what you think, um, and then go from there. So, yeah. Cool. So applications are open now. Um, it all starts on May 25th. So get involved. And thank you so much, Poppy, for joining me to talk about Maison Burlesque. My pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. Erotic aerobics, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Classes start later this month. Now, you can't walk into a cinema at the moment, but you can drive in. We hit the frog and toad to check out firsthand what's on at the drive-in. Thanks guys, I'm here at Yellow Drive-In where the movies have returned every night of the week. We're currently showing all the blockbuster favourites such as Jumanji, Frozen 2 and The Invisible Man and your classic drive-in movies such as Grace and the Fast and Furious franchise. We're the only cinema open in Australia right now, so bring a car of up to six people for $35, a movie and a great night. If you've never been here before, it's exactly what you might think if you've seen Greece. As you can see, there's uh, standing microphones and you can orientate your car either front ways or back ways. Bring a doona and snuggle in the boot. Last month, the New York Times reported a resurgence in drive-in movie activity. Let's hope it stays. Now we're going to dip back into the Scenes the TV vault where Jesse had a chat with and swapped some jokes with Randy Feltface, everyone's favourite purple puppet. At this stage, all I'm going to do is I'm going to get up there and I'm going to yell at people for an hour and hopefully at the end of it someone will go, that wasn't shit. It's a series of pictures that I drew of myself running across the story bridge with no pants on. <laughs> That's my novel. A festival like Wonderland is, is good for any city because of the programming. Yep. The shows are high quality, it gives artists a chance to hang out in an old power station. <laughs> I get to do interviews with people like you. I mean, the benefits are limitless. Best of friends, <laughs> hanging out the scenes to TV. Yes. What, uh, what's, what, are the, what are the good what things and the bad things? What are the good things and the bad things? Alright. Tell us a joke. Come on, Jesse. Knock, knock. Who's there? The interrupting sheep. The interrupting sheep. Ah, he got me a beauty. <laughs> he is a complete <laughs> crack up. <laughs> That's this week's episode of The Blender on Scenes to TV. If you like what you saw, why not subscribe for all new content around Australia every week? See you guys. Bye.